OK. So I believe that you can now see the screen of, of our yes, Fluidity Heat. Thank you very much, James. So this is a demo. This is not an actual network. It's based now in, in Helsinki. Um, and um, so what, just a few words about Fluidity Heat. It's a demand-driven simulation software that uh, it allows the modeling of networks regardless of their size or complexity. So uh, circular networks, as you can see that we have plenty uh, of untree like structures. So that, that is not a problem at all. And hundreds of kilometers of pipes, it's, it is of just adds a little bit time to the simulation and of course to the size of the model itself, but it can handle any, any amount of complexity. And it's meant for the modeling of district heating and cooling networks. And when it comes to district heating modeling, we want to obviously simulate the entire system. So the building demands, the behavior of the stations and substations with possible complex automation settings included, and um, the heat transfer between the network and the soil, obviously that's a big factor when it comes to, to understanding the losses, the heat losses in, in your system. So just a quick look at, at fluidic heat. We have different components now here on the map. We have our main plants, which is obvious, the place where, where we would be pumping new water into the system when it's lost to leakages and others. Then we have peak plants that are functioning according to outside temperature, that perhaps when it gets cold enough, they start producing energy into the system. Uh, here we also have pumping stations, we have an accumulator, so a thermal storage. This is relatively, uh, is it one year ago it was added as in Finland, there's a quite a bit of uh, hype at the moment. Most major cities are developing their own thermal storages in, in old, uh, possibly like oil storages or other places. So it's, it's a really big thing, especially in Finland at the moment. Then we also have a prosumer here in this demo model in the in the northern part of the network. And, and about prosumers, there's been quite a lot of interest in that. So for those that might not know, it is a consumer part of the time and also a producer then part of the time. And in Fluidic Heat, we are able to implement historical data or we are able to just bring in then um, patterns for for the uh, prosumers that they would be producing in a way that that we want them to be behaving. So, for example, in this case, if we have a quick look at just our power at the junction that the prosumer is connected to, we can see that during the night night hours, as we have now simulated, we are showing one day of of reporting. We simulated a couple of other days also so that the model can stabilize first. But here we can see that it, it's having positive power, which means that the uh, consumer is taking energy away from the network. And then during the morning and for the rest of the day, it's creating negative energy. So uh, that means that extra energy is coming into the network from this place here. If I would be then looking just a little visualization of pressure differences in this certain scenario. I have now basically these three plants, which one we have now uh, hypothetically uh, thought that our main plant is a coal plant, that this plant here is a geothermal plant, and we have an oil plant here, and then the prosumer is at the northern end. We are also showing the minimum pressure difference in the network. So if it drops down below a certain threshold value, obviously the heat exchangers are going to be having some problems taking the power. Um, as, as can be seen here that the prosumer is at those times when it is able to produce energy into the network. It is able to satisfy the rest of the consumers that are based in all of this northern part here. And the geothermal here and oil, as can be seen. 
So what then comes, as I already mentioned, that that generally what we model is those kind of uh, date when we want to be really dimensioning the network. So basically the coldest day of the year that, that the network and systems are, are dimensioned. So in Finland, that might be minus 26, for example. But it doesn't mean that we need to be tied to just simulating one day. So as in here, we have all the stations and all the consumers. They are now behaving in a way that when the outside temperature changes, it also changes all the behavior of the consumers and our plants. So I will be changing the scenario here in our scenario tree. Let's have a, oh, sorry, meant to change to January 2021, obviously. So here we can see that the air temperature the ambient temperature for now around this 11 days that we have simulated, it keeps changing according to actual historical data that is taken from, from Helsinki. It's the air temperature for the whole year. We have implemented, brought it in here, and so we can simulate the system, the network's behavior exactly according to this. So what this would then mean is that our main plants or, or other plants would be behaving and creating power as the demands are asking for it. And obviously when it gets colder, they would be creating more. And this works for, for all of the plants that have now been set to work according to the ambient temperature. A little look then, one, once we've made a lot of these different scenarios for different uh, types of situations that we're interested in, our schematics tools allows us to compare different scenarios and understand how do they actually function. So, for example, here we have the production of all of our plants, how much energy is being produced, what is the consumption of, of our all of the consumers in our network and the heat losses that are happening in our pipes. Then here we have for the three different plants, we have our pipe uh, schemes. So to show what are their um, capability of pumping the flow and head. And these are the points where it's actually functioning. So in this case, we could notice that our oil plant is running into troubles as this pump, it only has this one pump now, it would have to be functioning at a much higher flow and head than what currently the pump is capable of doing. But what this allows us is to have very uh, efficient look at the energy usages of the pumps and to do different optimization between the scenarios and different uh, temperatures as, as just to look at the dimensioning day doesn't really represent 99% of the functioning of the network, as that is obviously a very important time and place to take into consideration. But once we are really interested in how is the network functioning all throughout the year, it becomes a very important thing to forget the maximum time and to focus on, on other temperatures. Then I would like to show just a little one uh, topic that was especially mentioned is the crisis management and how can fluidic heat be also used for crisis management. So I have created one scenario here. This pipe is broken. And once I go into that, I will be able to see that now the minimum pressure differences in my network is having uh, my network is experiencing quite quite low pressure differences and it's causing problems for the consumers to be taking their power. This is caused by this pipe here being closed. So now all of the water that is going from our main plant 
to this point is having to go through a different route as it would normally go through. Here is a profile view of this exactly. The main plant supply going and as the as it is taken forward the time it is running into quite some troubles but what is the fix then is that now the main plant the way that it is functioning is that we are looking at certain control nodes in our network as most bigger networks are functioning that you are having control nodes and you are uh, that the plants are looking at those and keeping the pressure difference at the furthest point. But because our main plant isn't actually looking at any of these points in, in here, it doesn't care that these uh, pressure differences are not met. So what the fix would just be is that for our main plant, we would have one extra control uh, point be in this island here. And thus it would be pumping extra uh, extra head and then creating enough flow for those points there. So that's a general very quick view at some of the main points that were discussed uh, in, in the webinar ticket then. A short word also as some questions were about uh, digital twins and online model as the other word is. So at the moment we are doing a pilot project on our first district heating online model. We have done a few on, on the water side and obviously the idea is relatively more or less the same but the district heating is much more focused there's quite a bit more variability throughout the year as the temperatures change. But it brings a plethora of, of really interesting opportunities to understand the different online measurement data that the district heating networks are having a lot more than water networks, for example. But unfortunately, I'm not able to show anyone yet as, as of this moment, um, a working district heating online model, but hopefully rather soon we'll, we'll hopefully get to that. 